Just a quick question about farming. You both have talked about how digital technologies from mobile phones to sequencing genomes of seeds could play a very big role in, in farming in, in Africa. Um, how big of a role do you see small farmers playing in this effort? Are you focusing on bigger farmers? Just how, how is this going to, to play out? We are quite focused on smallholder farmers because the predominant number of Africans farming today are smallholder farmers and they're on pieces of land that are less than two hectares so it's quite mm -hmm. a small farm. There are agro dealers uh, that exist in these countries. We need to get that network up and running just like we've got the vaccine network up and running and getting vaccines out, getting up and running so they're teaching people proper planting, proper fertilize, proper irrigation, and getting them new seeds as they come out. There's fantastic technology going on for pest resistant seeds, for drought resistant seeds, flood resistant seeds as the rains come at different times. And so as people are educated about them and they start to see their neighbors getting, you know, a third more yield off their farm, they say, I want those. Mm -hmm. So getting those systems up and running, again, one of the most promising places we see that happening is Ethiopia today. They really have gotten their infrastructure and agriculture working. And that will lift up, not just farmers are on their own farm, so they have more to eat, but they can put it on the local market and it lifts up the economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's been talk of gene editing and really getting high tech with seeds. Of course, there's some controversy over that. How, how, big, of a, how big of a role do you think technology and, and uh, gene editing may be used to, to really tackle um, the food problem? Yeah, what are called GMOs are done uh, by changing the genes of the plant. And it's done in a way where there's a very thorough safety procedure. And it's pretty incredible because it reduces the amount of pesticide you need, uh, raises productivity, uh, can help with malnutrition by getting uh, vitamin fortification. And you know, so I think for Africa, this is gonna make a huge difference, particularly as they face climate change, the increased productivity and resilience mm -hmm. of the seeds, most of which will come from the new scientific techniques. So the gene editing just allows that to be done in a more precise way mm -hmm. than it's ever been done in the past. So it'll, it'll accelerate the rate of innovation. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a certain naivete that without that, it could be done anyway? That, uh, I mean, you've seen the well, results on the ground of, of the, conventional. The, the Africans, it's up in the air. And uh, you know, Kenya just approved a, a BT maze. The Europeans have decided they don't want to use it, most of them, which is fine. They're not facing malnutrition and starvation. If they want to pay a premium for food of a kind, it, it, it's not a huge deal. The you know, US, China, Brazil are using these things. And if you want farmers in Africa to improve nutrition and be competitive on the world market, you know, as long as the right safety things are done, uh, that's really beneficial. It's, it's kind of a second round of the Green Revolution. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the Africans, I think, will choose uh, to let their people mm -hmm. have, have enough to eat.